Compound Characterization, Proton Nuclear Magnetic Resonance Interpretation, Part 1, Examples. In this webcast, we will go through a few examples to reinforce what you learned concerning interpreting NMR spectra in the previous webcast. Consider this molecule on the left. Tell me how many signals you expect to see and what are the multiplicities of those signals. Pause the video, take some time, and decide. Because this is a warm-up, I included some helpful labels for you. The protons labeled HA are equivalent, and the protons labeled HB are also equivalent. I should also remember that the proton that is part of the alcohol would also give its own signal, but because it is labile, I may or may not see it. What about multiplicities? For the HA protons, I would expect to see a triplet, which I will shorten to just T because there are only two neighbors to the HA protons. For the HB protons, I would expect to see a quartet, which I will shorten to just Q, because the HB protons have three neighbors. Remember, labile protons do not cause any splitting. Let's look at the actual NMR spectra and see how we did. Look at that, I see three signals. One, two, three. One of which is a triplet, like expected, and one of which is a quartet, like expected. Excellent. Do the chemical shifts make sense? Should the quartet be further downfield than the triplet? Remember, the quartet belongs to the HB protons. The HB protons are very close to this electron withdrawing alcohol. Therefore, the HB protons should be more T shielded than the farther away HA protons. Therefore, the HB protons should be more downfield, and that matches what we see. Similar exercise here. Looking at this chemical structure, how many signals do you expect? What is your predicted multiplicity for each signal? And now, try and predict the chemical shift for each set as well. Pause the video, take some time, and then let's see how you did. Welcome back. I expect to see three signals. The methyl on the left should produce its own signal. The methylene in the middle should produce its own signal. And the methyl on the right should produce its own signal. What about multiplicities? The purple protons have no adjacent hydrogens. Therefore, they should show up as a singlet, which I shall abbreviate using the letter S. The methylene protons have three neighbors. Therefore, they should show up as a quartet. And the blue protons have two neighbors. Therefore, they should show up as a triplet. What about chemical shifts? What do we predict for those? The purple protons are adjacent to a carbonyl. That carbonyl is electron withdrawing, but it's not very electron withdrawing. I predict those protons will appear at roughly 2.5 ppm. That's downfield, but not very downfield. Similarly, the red protons being adjacent to the same carbonyl should be in roughly that same area. In contrast, the blue protons are pretty far away from that carbonyl. Therefore, they should still be pretty shielded. I predict they will appear at roughly 1.0 ppm. Your values may not match mine exactly. That's okay. So long as your values are in the same vicinity, you're thinking about this the right way. Now let's see how our predictions match reality. The purple protons should appear as a singlet at roughly 2.5 ppm. Is there such a signal in that area? Yes, there is. I have a singlet at roughly 2.1 ppm. My prediction was pretty close. My red protons should be a quartet at roughly 2.5 ppm. How did we do there? Pretty good, actually. There's a quartet at almost exactly 2.5 ppm. What about the blue protons? I should see a triplet at 1.0 ppm. Excellent! I see a triplet at just above 1.0 ppm. My predictions were pretty accurate. Why were my chemical shift predictions so accurate? This is because different types of protons appear in characteristic locations. Protons not near electron withdrawing groups tend to be at roughly 1.0 ppm. Sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, but somewhere in that area. Protons near electron withdrawing groups, such as carbonyls, will appear downfield of that. 
because carbonyls are weak electron withdrawing groups, they should be at roughly 2.5. Again, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, but somewhere in that area. The first two exercises ask you to take a structure and predict what the spectrum would look like. In most cases, however, we don't know what the compound looks like. Instead, we try to use the spectrum to tell us what the compound looks like. To do this, we have to look at a proton NMR spectrum, such as this one, and be able to pull out all of the useful information. We usually organize that information using tables. In this course, when labeling signals in a spectrum, we are going to use letters, where we start with A, with the signal farthest downfield, and then go down the alphabet as we go to the right. Like so. What I would like you to do is pull out all of the important information in this NMR spectra. That means I want you to tell me the integration of each signal, the chemical shift of each signal, which I shall designate using the Greek letter delta, and the multiplicity of each signal. Spend some time and fill out this table, and then come back and check your work. Okay, let's see how you did. To find the integration of A, I look at this number below the signal. It says a value of two, therefore A's integration is two. I continue down the line, filling in the values. If I don't have an integer, I simply round to the nearest whole number. And there we go, I filled in the first column of my table. Now let's look at chemical shifts. When it comes to recording chemical shifts, it doesn't have to be exact. For example, for signal A, I'm not going to record 3.413. There's no way I can get that exact. I'm just going to simply write, okay, that looks to be about 3.4 parts per million. For B, that looks to be about 2.1. C is about, I might say 1.75 for that. Again, it's not an exact value, but it's the best estimate just based on what I see. And then signal D is about 0 0.9. There we go. That's another column of very useful information recorded in our data table. Now multiplicity. A has two peaks, therefore that's a doublet, which I shall designate with lowercase d. B is a singlet. C has seven peaks, therefore that's a septet, which I shall shorten to just sept. And then D is another doublet. Excellent. That's the entire table of information that you can pull out of an NMR spectra based on what we've discussed so far. One more exercise before we go, however. Using the multiplicity, tell me the number of adjacent protons. Pause the video. Tell me how many protons are next door to each of these signals. Let's see how you did. A is a doublet. Remember the n plus one rule, where n is the number of adjacent protons. For A, n plus one has to equal two. Therefore, n equals one. There is one adjacent proton to signal A. If you look at B, that's a singlet, so that's zero. If you look at C, that's a septet. It's got to be 6, 7 peak, 7 minus 1 is 6, and D is another doublet. Therefore, that 2 has only one adjacent proton. There we go. We now know how many equivalent sets of hydrogens there are. 1, 2, 3, 4. We now know how many protons belong in each set, based on the integration. We have a rough idea of what kinds of protons these are, based on the chemical shift. Signal A is further downfield, therefore it must be near a strong electron withdrawing group. In contrast, signal D is very far upfield, therefore it must not be near any electron withdrawing group. We also know something about the neighborhood of all of these signals. We know that the protons in signal A have only one neighbor, but the protons in signal C have six neighbors. This NMR spectrum is a partial NMR spectrum. It is only showing some of the proton signals for this molecule. As a result, we cannot identify this particular molecule. However, if we did have a full spectrum and you had a full table of information, all you would need to begin figuring out what the compound is would be the molecular formula. 
that brings us to the end of this webcast. To recap, the most important thing you can do when interpreting NMR spectra is to organize your data. This process begins by working through a spectrum one aspect at a time. Label your signals in the NMR spectra and then identify their chemical shift, their integration, and their multiplicity. With that information in hand and organized, it will be easier to see how all the different pieces fit together.